Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning, RCF. Good morning. Amen. And all to the all to all the mothers in, in the house. Y'all could tell I'm nervous, huh? <laughs> to all the mothers in the house, amen. I want to say happy Mother's Day to you. Amen. Amen. God is good. He's just he's just an awesome God. They're giving me my Bible, they're giving me some stuff that I need to get going here. I don't want to be long before you guys, you know, so we can get through the word. I guess they got lost on me. I don't know. <laughs> Are you guys doing all right? Amen. 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 It's good to have my wife with me, Beverly. It's good to see her. Amen. Good to see her. I'm, I'm jacked up, ain't I? See, my sister asked me this morning if you still get nervous when you're preaching. This tells you how nervous I get. Amen. Amen. God's good. Come on. I'm going to do something different this morning. Amen. We're not going to have a, a, a scripture per se to read from. Amen. Because I'm going to ask you guys just to track with me. Um, this morning as we, as we look at the word of God, amen, I don't know if Eddie could get the, the, the scriptures up on the screen for me, but what I want to talk to you about this morning is that your faith determines God's response. Let me say that to somebody again. Your faith, your faith, your faith determines God's response. Here's the thing, as believers, as believers, we, we live by faith. That's how we live, according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. As believers, that's the only way we live. For the scripture will say that we walk by faith and not by sight. And so for us, the journey with God is just to walk by faith. We don't walk based on what we see when we come to God. Amen. We just walk by faith. So therefore, we walk by what we don't see, but we live out what it is we already have in us as though we are seeing it. Is that making sense to somebody? That's why Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But let me give you a different definition from the Greek what faith really is because faith now, faith, when you look at faith, faith means to have a foundation. It means to have assurance. It means to have the title deed and a guarantee of the things hopeful. Evidence means the conviction. I am convicted that I have the thing that I'm hoping for by faith. And so, therefore, when you look at faith, you'll be looking at faith in this particular light. Faith will simply say to us that faith is the actual possessions of things hoped for, the evidence of the reality of things not seen. I guess I said too much for you guys, huh? You got quiet at me. Let me say it again to you. This is what faith will actually say to you. Faith will actually say that faith is the actual possession of things hoped for, for the, uh, the evidence of the reality of the thing not seen. In other words, let me help you to understand this, is that I already have, my, I already have salvation, but I have not seen it. Come on, I already possess salvation, but, but, but guess what? I have not seen the end result of my salvation, so therefore I live out my salvation as though I am seeing it because I believe that I actually possess salvation. That's what, that's what faith is. That's what faith means. And so therefore, faith will say to me that, that, that I already sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, even though I have not seen it. Come on. So therefore, since I believe now, I already sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, I set my mind on the things above and not on the things beneath because my faith says to me I am in heaven, but I'm just having an earthly experience. That's what faith is. That's what, that's, that's what faith is. So therefore, faith will say to me, even though I'm having some pains in my body, faith will say to me, you are healed even though you have not seen it. And so I behave and I act and I walk around as though I have already possessed my healing even though I have not seen it. That's what faith is. So therefore, so therefore faith is the actual possession of something that I'm hoping for that I have not yet received. But I believe that I have it. That's my faith. That's my faith. So with that now, I want to walk you through some things and, and point out to you now that, that your faith and my faith determines how God responds to us. 
That's the whole thing. Your faith determines how God responds to us. And normally when it comes to God, 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 God will respond to us in five ways. How many know there's five, there's five things about your faith? The first thing about your faith, you'll find it now, that when Jesus talks about it in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29 with the, with, with, with the centurion soldier who wanted his servant to be healed. And the centurion soldier will say to Jesus, I understand authority because I am a man of authority. I say to this one, go, and he goes. I say to this one, come, and he comes. I say to this one, do, and he does. So therefore, I understand your authority. So therefore, you don't have to come to my house. All you have to do is say a word. That's what he said. But here was Jesus now. And here's how Jesus responded to his faith. Jesus responded by, to his faith by saying, I have not seen so great a faith in all of Israel. Amen. That's the first response because based on how the centurion soldier demonstrated his faith, it made Jesus respond to his faith by saying, wow, what great faith. Talk to me all. Yeah, because he understands authority, authority. Come on, the second, the, second, the second response, he will respond to your faith. He just says, well, wow, wow, according to your faith. Do you remember the two blind men when Jesus was walking by? They called out to Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then he asked them, do you think that I can do this thing? And they said, yeah, here was his response. So be it according to your faith. And so, so, so therefore your faith now determines how God is going to respond to you. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 26, you find Jesus is asking his disciples, he says, O ye of little faith. In, in, in Mark chapter 4, verse number 40, he will say to them, why you have no faith? And in Luke chapter 8 and verse number 25, he says, where is your faith? Where is your faith? And so this morning, just for a little while, I want to look at those three narratives where Jesus said to them, O ye of little faith, uh, why you have no faith, and where is your faith? And so I want to look at Matthew and Mark's, uh, uh, not Matthew, I want to look at Mark and Luke's now narrative first because all three of the story is the same thing. There are, there, there are 13 people on a boat, 12 disciples and Jesus. And they're going to the other side. The word to them is, let's go over to the other side. And the Bible says that Jesus now, when he got into the boat, he went into the front part of the boat on a pillow, the Bible says, and lay down and fell asleep. While he's asleep, the Bible says a great storm arose, a severe storm. And there's some of us this morning sitting in here, or I would venture to say all of us this morning is going through some kind of storm. Come on, you're either going through a marital storm, come on, a job-seeking storm, a financial storm, come on, come on, some kind of medical storm. Nonetheless, all of us is going through a storm. And guess what? Determines now how you respond or how you exercise your faith will determine how God responds to you. I don't know if Eddie could put if Eddie could put it on uh, uh, Mark, Mark or Luke's um, version of the narrative of the on the story. But here's what he will say in verse number uh, 24. Now it says there arose a great tempest in the sea, so much that the ship was covered with the wave. But he was asleep, and his disciples came unto him and woke him and said unto him, Lord, save us, we perish. Amen. But from from out of the King James version. It says, Lord, do, don't you care about us? And so here's Jesus now. They're in the boat, and they call out to him. They're going through the subject. Mark and Luke now says to him, don't you care that we perish? Notice, all three narratives uses the word perish. Perish means to be lost, to be destroyed. Come on, to lose something. My, my life is in jeopardy. Good. My life is in Could you put it in, please? Robert, could you listen to me? My life is in jeopardy. I'm, I'm going through a crisis. I'm going through a great dilemma. This is just not my morning. Huh? <laughs> I'm going through a great dilemma. I'm going through a crisis, and I, I need you. But I want you to notice with me this morning what happens now in the narrative of Mark and Luke, because it's what Jesus has to do based on our faith or based on how we respond to him by faith. 
The Bible was said to us that the ship was rocking, the wind was blowing, the storm was severe, and they came to him, and Mark would say to him, we perish, or Luke would say, we perish, that's all he says, we perish, and he asked them a question, he says now, where is your faith? Where is your faith? In other words, you have no confidence and you have no trust in me. Hello, y'all. That's what he's saying to them because all they say, look, Lord, we are going to die. Come on, if you don't do something about this. And the question was, where was your faith? But here's the thing I want you to notice in Mark and Luke. I want you to notice what Jesus did. What Jesus did, the Bible says he arose and he went and rebuked the wind and the wave and it was still. And then he spoke to them. You see, because sometimes now, based on our faith, based on how we act, based on how we behave, come on, when it comes to trusting God, he has to deal with the situation first and then deals with us. Y'all, 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 y'all missing me here. Y'all missing me here. Let me, let, me, let me help you to understand this because if you have a grandchild and the grandchild goes in the bathroom, turns the water on, plugs up the, the, the sink or the tub, and the water is running down the hallway, what you going to do, you're going to go deal with the water first. Hello now, come on. Come on, you're going to deal with the water first, and after you deal with the water is when you're going to deal with the grandchild. You, you know what I'm talking about. And sometimes now it determines now, our faith determines how he responds to us. And so, so therefore, since you're going through a crisis, and the first thing is that this, I'm going to die, he has to first now, watch this now, deal with your situation, and then turn around and deal with you. It's based, it's based on your faith. It's based, it's, based on your, it's based on your faith. It's based on your cry. It is based on your call to him. It is based, it's based on how you react to him. And here's a big problem in the church. Most of us now, based on how God responds to us, we, we will think that we need more faith. Come on. Come on, it's a misnomer in the church. It's been a misnomer teaching for years. And so therefore, you will think now, like the disciples in the book of Luke now, when Jesus was talking about sin and they said, well, Lord, increase our faith, you will think that the verse meant now to give you more faith. Because here's what he said. He says, he says if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, and here's what us foolish preachers begin to do. We begin now to, to, to actually preach to you a mustard tree message and how a mustard tree grows into a great big tree and it, come on it starts out well small you plant it and it grows up to one of the biggest tree in the world and you will think you need more faith that's not what the passage is saying all Jesus is saying to them is that if you can exercise faith the size of a mustard seed you can move me come on to do great things in your life and so therefore now, therefore I need you to understand now, it is not the quantity of faith that you have, it is the quality of your faith. It's the quality of your faith. And so some of you will not do ministry because you figure you don't have faith like Pastor Gilbert and you will wish that though you have faith like Dr. Gilbert. That's, that's, that's his new name, right? Amen. You wish you have faith like Dr. Gilbert and so therefore you will not move. And some of you will say, if I have faith like the worship team, I will do great things for God. But God is saying to you this morning, it's not how much faith you have. It is the quality of faith that you possess in you determines how I respond to you. So when he said to them, where is your faith? Now he's saying to them, you don't trust me enough in the midst of your storm. Yeah, you don't, have, you don't have enough confidence that I can go take a rest and know that my word that I say to you is going to come to pass. And so therefore now, you will stand to look around and been calling on Jesus for years about the situation. And he is saying to you, just trust me in the midst of the storm. So he will say to them, where is your faith? And some, some of us in here this morning, that's all we have. That's all we have. Where is your faith? That's all we have. Where is your faith? Jesus has been saying that to you for years. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? From Mark's perspective, he says to them, no faith. 
Because when you come to Mark's narrative, you find Mark's now. Mark will say this to them. Master, master. Notice that Luke said master too. Meaning teacher. Come on. He's actually meaning commander. Come on. Come on. One who is in charge of something. That's all they're looking at him as. as you are the teacher. Come on. You are responsible for me. That's the way they're looking at him. And so when Mark now tells us a story, Mark says that they came to him and says this words to him, Master, thou carest not. Hello. And some of us, when we go to God, we say to God, God, don't you care? Talk to me, y'all. Come on, don't, don't, don't be afraid because there's others sitting here. Come on, you come and you say, hey, come on, I see the way you care for Robert. I wish you would care for me. Hello, somebody. Hey, come on, come on. You know, you, you know, you all know what y'all do when it comes to him. Come on, and let me tell you something. Based on all that Jesus has already done for you, don't you know that he cares for you? Come, come on, all the mess he has already delivered you out of, come on, all of the time he has already turned your situation around. Don't you know that he already cared for you? How could you come before him and say to him, Master, don't you care about us? Come on, he's already delivered you. He's already set you free. He's already answered your prayers. Uh, how can you come to him uh, and say to him, Lord, don't, or Master, don't you care that we perish? Let me tell you something. If you are a born again uh, a believer, let me tell you something. There's no perishing for you and there's no perishing for me. Uh, hello, somebody. Come on. There's no perishing for us because in us is eternal life. And so therefore he had to say to them, watch this now. Where, come on, no faith. In other words, all he's saying to them is, guess what? You are not exercising any faith or any confidence in me. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. He said to them, come on, you got to demonstrate your faith. You got to show me your faith. I got to see your faith because I care it for you. That's why, that's why, that's why the Bible tells us, cast all your cares upon him for he... Come on, for he care it for you. Yeah, yeah. That's why he said, that's why he said, seek me early in the morning so you can find me. Call me and I will show up. Come on, I'm, a, I'm the Lord. Come on, I'm a present help in the time of, come on, if any trouble you're going through, he's a present help in the midst of, uh, of, it, of it. But yet he has to come now and deal with us now according to the faith that we exercise in him. And half of the time he says to us, no faith. That's what he says to us, no faith. Where's your faith? I want to look at, I want to look at Matthew's perspective and then we can get out of here because from Matthew's perspective, Matthew now reverses the whole thing. Matthew is the theologian. He, he deals with it from a place of spirituality and not from a place of physical because the first two is a natural response. And that's how you and I will naturally act in the midst of a situation. But from out of Matthew's perspective, he deals with it from a spiritual place and that's where God wants us to deal with him from a spiritual place even though he says to them little faith I'm going to tell you what that means in a minute in a minute but 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 still he understood that they were willing now to exercise their faith but they stopped short now of what God can do for them look at Matthew look at Matthew if you would if you look at me Matthew chapter 8 amen if you can if you can put it up there for for me uh, according uh, around verse number 26 on down or 25 on down if you could put that up there for me because here's the thing the storm is in the boat the storm is raging the wind is blowing I want you to get that picture in your mind the storm is blowing the wind is raging I want you to get that in your mind I want it to register in you so therefore if you allow me to just hypnotize you by, just by repeating over over and over and over, the storm is raging. The wind is blowing. Water is coming into the boat. I'm going to say it again. The storm is raging. The wind is blowing. Come in, come on, and the water is coming into the boat. I want you to get the picture. I don't want you to lose the picture. The storm is raging. The wind is blowing, and the water is coming into the boat. Now, from out of Matthew's perspective, Matthew gets up and notice the word that he says to them. Watch this now. He, his disciples came unto him and says unto him, Note the first word, Lord. Hello, y'all. 
Lord means that Matthew, when Matthew looked at the situation, Matthew, Matthew realized there's one of authority over everything. Come on, Matthew realized his actual supremacy as God of the universe. Come on, the creator of the universe. So, so therefore, from out of Matthew's mouth, he is that master, he's Lord. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying to y'all. Because here's the thing, for a lot of us today, he's still master, he's not Lord. Because Lord takes us to another level as to who he is. Lord means he has a sovereignty over my life. He's sovereign over my situation. He's sovereign over my crisis. Come on, he's the Lord of the universe. Everything was made by him. And there isn't anything that was made that has not been made by him. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And everything in it belongs to him. He is the Lord of all. Matthew, Matthew, recognize that he is Lord. Uh, uh, Any of y'all could put that up there, just leave it up there for, for me. He, so notice the next thing he says. He says, Lord, save us. When he used the word, Lord, save us, he, he's talking about salvation. Lord, save us. Lord, if you don't save me, I'm hell bound. Come on, somebody. If you don't save me, I have no eternity with you. I'm lost forever, Lord. Lord, save us. Lord, I need you to deliver me from me. I need you to deliver me from this sinful nature. I need you to set me free. Lord, save us. Okay, y'all don't want to be saved. So Lord, save me out of all of the mess that I'm going through in my life. I need you to save me. Come on, come on. From out of all of the dilemma, change my heart. Change my mind. Deliver me. Set me free. Give me a new hope. Give me a new insight. Change my mind. Make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Lord, save me. Then he says, we perish. In other words, Lord, if you don't save me, I'm going to hell. I'm lost. I'm doomed. I'm destroyed forever. There's no hope for me. Lord, save me. Now, now, now here's the thing I want you to notice. They got the King James. says in red. Watch this now. Watch this now. And he said unto them, why are you faithful, fearful, all ye of little faith? Here's what the word fearful be. He says, he's saying, okay, he's just talking to me. So y'all so just listen to Jesus talking to me. He says to me, he says, you such a coward. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Why are you such a coward, O ye of little faith? Because let me tell you something. Whenever you and I are going through something, one of the first things that pops up in our life is, come on, hello, come on, fear will cripple you. Hello, fear will keep you at a standstill fear will stop you from taking the next step come on that's why he says why are you so coward because watch this now your fear stop you from going to the next place of faith with me i did not say more faith i said the next place in other words fear stop you from putting all of your confidence and all of your trust in me come on fear stop you from putting all of your hope in me relying and depending upon me 100 percent Faith brought you to the border, but fear stopped you from crossing over. But here's the thing I want you to notice. Put the verse back up. Put the verse back up. I want you to notice in the text that while he is talking to the disciples, watch this now, the winds are raging. I want y'all to get it. Remember, I just tried to paint the picture in your mind. While he's dealing with you, while he's dealing with me, the winds are still, y'all with me? Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I'm, uh, come on. He, he, he's, I'm in the boat. You are in the boat. And the winds are blowing, and the water is coming into the boat. Come on. Nobody's bailing out the water, and he's talking to me. Why are you fearful or ye of little faith? You don't have enough confidence. You don't have sufficient trust in me. And so what's going on that will stop you from getting over the border is fear. He's talking to me. He's talking to you while the storm is still raging. It's in the text. Uh, look at the text. He's dealing with you. And guess what? He's, and all the stuff is going on in your life. But actually, it's a teachable moment. Let me help you to cross over the border of faith to have a little more confidence in me while the storm is still raging in your life. I guess everybody here 
is a Luke and Mark. <laughs> come on, come on. You want him to deal with the sin. You see, economy, that's what we do. We want God to deal with the situation first. But for, guess what? But guess what? From out of Matthew's perspective, he's got to deal with me first. Uh, yeah, come on, talk to me. Come on, come on. Come on. He's got to deal with it first. Uh, come on, come on. I'm sick, but he, come on, come on. But he has to deal with me first. Uh, come on, come on. My marriage is in a wreck, but he got to deal with me first. Come on, my house is upside down. He's got to deal with me. Come on, come on. He got to deal with me first. Come on, come on. I'm catching hell and high waters on my job, but he's got to deal with me first. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on, come on. Life, life has dealt me a raw hand, but he's got to deal with me first. What I really wanted to see from out of Matthew's perspective, he is still sitting down in the boat teaching them to have more trust and more confidence in him. Watch this now, I'm done. Uh, put the text back up there for me real quick, because watch what the text. Watch what the text says. Now remember, he's talking to them. The winds is raising, the winds is blowing in their life, and he's dealing with them now. Oh, why are you afraid? Why are you coward? How, why would you allow the circumstances to stop you from getting over to the other side? Why? Why, why would you allow now the storm in your life to, to hinder you from becoming who I say you are? Why? 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 Why would you allow your finances to stop you from giving to my work? Y'all didn't hear what I'm talking to you all about. Why? 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 Why is it that you will allow your children to determine whether you go to church or not? He's got to deal with me first. Note what the text says. Put the text back up there for me real quick. Amen. I was right in the back. Here's what it says. And the text says, watch this now, then he arose. Yeah. From Mark and Luke, he arose first. <laughs> From Matthew's perspective, he arose last. <laughs> In other words, what he's saying now, watch this now, I'm going to deal with you. I have dealt with you. Come on. I have helped you. Now let me show you who I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've helped you with your fear issue. I've helped you with your faith issue. Let me teach you now who I am. Let me show you now that I am the God now who is able to still the, the storm in your life. Come on, calm the winds in your life. Come on, come on, give you peace in your situation. So then he arose now and watch me then rebuke the winds and, and the sea and there was a great calm. You see, what he's saying to me here is watch this now. Let me show you my power. Come on, come on, to help you through life to let you know that even the elements of nature listens to me. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who you are this morning. I don't know what it is you're going through. I don't know your situation. I don't know your crisis. But he's still sitting down in your life. Let me say it again. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your storm on this Mother's Day. I don't know your crisis. I don't know your dilemma. I don't know your bad news. But I want you to know he's still sitting down in your life. He's dealing with you. He's helping you through your situation. He has not yet arose to heal you. Come on, he has not yet arose. And you are wondering, where is God in the midst of my situation? He's there. He's dealing with you. He has not yet arose to bring you out of it. He wants you that the next time, the next storm come, come on, come on, come on, the next wave come. He wants you to stop being a coward, stop being afraid, and trust him in the midst of this. In other words, what he's saying to the disciples is this. He's saying to the disciples, the next time there's a storm, you don't have to disturb me. Just let me sleep on. I'm with you. Don't worry about it. The other storm is coming. The other storm is, I already showed you. 
So the next time, the next time, the next time the husband decides to cheat and you don't call me. Come on, come on, you know, come on. I've given you enough faith. Come on, to trust me in the midst of the situation. I don't have to get up and deal with it the next time. Come on, come on, come on. Because you just have the faith that I'm going to see you through whatever you're going through. I'm going to fix your situation. You don't have to call me. You don't have to say, Lord, save me. You just got to trust me. You just got to trust me. You just got to trust me. You, know, something. you ought not to struggle to know whether you're going to heaven or not. You ought to know you're already in heaven. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. Come on. You ought not to struggle whether you're saved or not. You ought to know you're already saved. You don't have to call them. You don't got to wake him up. Stop disturbing Jesus. He's sitting at the right hand side of the Father. Come on. And he wants you to have faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants you to have faith in him. Now don't call him. Praise him. Come on. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Come and worship him. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying there. Come on. Don't get on your hands and knees praying about your situation. Give him the highest praise. Give him the glory that's due his name. The honor that belongs to him. He's a majestic God. He's a great God. He's a great I am. Trust him. Don't call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust him. Just trust him. Just trust him. He'll see you through every situation. He'll see you through every crisis. If you can just move from out of the place of being coward and, and not having enough trust and confidence in him. He, come on, he's walking with you. He's talking with you. He's already by your side. Here's the promise. I'll never leave you, nor will I never forsake you. Why am I crying Jesus for? He's already by my side. Come on. His presence is, come on, where can I go from his presence? His presence is everywhere. Everywhere. If I go to heaven, he's there. If I go beneath the earth, he's there. Come on, if I go to the forest east end of the earth, he's there. If I go to the south, he's there. No matter where I go, he is already there. I need to worship. I need to worship. And if we can get into the posture of just worshiping him and stop calling him for every situation. Stop calling him for every crisis. Stop calling him for every dilemma. Let him rest. Let him rest. Guess why? Guess why? Because one day, one day, one day, the Bible says, one day, one day, the Father, God Almighty, go elbow Jesus and say, get up now. Go get your church. Just let him sit on the throne. Come on. Come on. Just let him shine in your life. Come on. Let the world see his glory in you. Come on. Let the world, let, let the world see, the, come on, all he's doing in your life so that the world may glorify our Father who art in Yeah, worship him. Just worship him. Come on, Felix, I'm done. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship. Just worship. Wow. Wow. Word, man. Woo. Come on, stand to your feet.